Hey everyone, today we're ranking the Survivor Adept Challenges from easiest to hardest. The Adept Challenge for Survivors is escaping a trial using only the Survivor's three perks. The Survivor Adepts are a little different as they are generally more straightforward and don't require as much skill and can often be obtained by luck. If you have good teammates, even some of the harder Adepts can be done fairly easily. I did most of the Adepts a while ago, so I got your input too on this one for a more rounded look. We have four tiers, not a challenge at all, slightly challenging, quite challenging, and very challenging. Let's get into it. Starting out, we have the no challenge at all tier. To start us off here, my pick for the easiest adept to obtain is Meg, who has the perks Quick and Quiet, Adrenaline, and Sprint Burst. She has probably the best base set of perks, and to many people, this setup is essentially just a normal game. At that point, not much of a challenge, I think. Fang follows up with her perks Technician, Lithe, and Alert. To me, she has always been one of the most well-rounded characters for her perks, with them all working together very well. Lithe is a great chase perk, Alert is amazing for information, and Technician saves you from any gen mistakes. Super easy, I think. Dwight Fairfield is more gen focused, but I do think one of the easier characters. Giving solid teammate info with Bond and solid gen and general speed perks with Prove Thyself and Leader. Be a gen jockey for a game and the adept is yours. Bill Overbeck is another fairly easy character with his multitude of survival tools. He has extended borrowed time on saves, and he gets to fully recover from the dying state with Unbreakable. He does also get left behind if you ever reach a stage where the hatch is important. You can see it with an aura. In the case of Adepts, I think Bill is pretty strong and fairly easy. Nancy Wheeler doesn't technically have an Adept anymore, but you can use her three original perks and recreate it still. She has very well-rounded perks, perfect for a stealthy and gen-focused game. Pretty easy, I think. Kate Denson is a great example of having an easier Adept despite her having chase-focused perks. Windows is amazing, revealing all Vault and Paladoras, then Dance With Me gives some nice chase deception, and Boil Over is maybe going to help you under rare circumstances. Kate's an easy one, I think. Maybe a bit debatable if you don't feel as confident in chase. Gabriel Soma, I think, is honestly one of the better core sets of perks that give him a good amount of survivability. Made for this is debatably one of the best perks right now, it giving a constant 3% boost to movement speed when injured. His other two perks can help a bit for gen speed and information too. Nia Carlson I want to put at the end of this tier, with her perks that allow solid stealth, item retention, and getaway. Only downside of Nia's perk set is that they aren't the strongest in their respective categories, and balance landing can be a little situational and map dependent. On to the slightly challenging tier. Felix Richter has some solid perks to help you along with the Adept, Visionary locates you gens, and Desperate Measures applies a very helpful healing and unhooking speed bonus. Bring along a medkit or a toolbox too, and you basically get it multiple times over with Built to Last. Really solid perk set and not too hard, I think. Michaela Reed has good perks, all of which are pretty easy to set up and activate. Her double boon has the two strongest boons and allows speedier team heals and some stealth in set areas. Clairvoyance can be good, it's kinda eh, I think, comparatively to using the totems for boons though. Not too hard this one, although some definite team reliance. Jonah Vasquez has a good set of perks, and ones that help him to get out of danger. Overcome extends your post-hit speed boost, which is pretty amazing in most occasions. Corrective action is near useless, but may come in handy. Exponential is a perk that has a chance to completely save you or do literally nothing. It's a very luck-based perk, I think. Depending on where you go down, if you get slugged, where you put your boon, it's lots of hoops to jump through. Rebecca Chambers is kind of interesting because her perks largely focus on buffing teammates, but this isn't necessarily a bad thing, because to get the adept, it's usually good to have your teammates alive. Reassurance helps a lot with that, and better than new helps a bit. Hyperfocus is risky, but good if you can hit the skill checks. Only downside with Rebecca is lack of stuff to save yourself, I suppose. Claudette Morel is 
is an interesting case because it could very much be argued that she wastes way too much time if you choose to self-care. Equally, she does get the benefit of speedier heals and seeing injured teammates, so I'm putting her here in kind of a depending how you play her type of deal. Much like Rebecca, she also kind of lacks things to save herself, aside self-care of course, which is often detrimental. Ada Wong, I think, has some pretty good perks for an adept. Wiretap is solid and helpful information for killer location, but also team coordination. Reactive healing is situational, but can be quite good, and low profile, a bit like Bill's left behind may come in handy for some stressful endgame moments. Hadi Core, I tend to think, is pretty similar to. She has some great perks for being a background player and shredding gens with some additional helpful perks to both debuff the killer, but also remain aware of your own surroundings. Her perks are a bit more kind of different, but they all work very well, I think, to actually achieving you that adept. Leon S. Kennedy has some nice perks that help you stay stealthy, locate gens that need help, and also craft a means to fight back in some form. These perks can be a bit tricky to get value from, which is where the more challenging aspect comes in, but largely he's got a pretty easy adept. David Tapp has a good perk set. All of them I will say can feel quite average much of the time. Hunch and Stakeout are both good perks for general info, and slightly speedier gens and heals. Tenacity is also solid if the killer happens to slug. Pretty average, not too hard. Steve Harrington is definitely a little tougher than some of the others here. Kinch Ship is definitely a nice help, and renewal when it works too. Guardian is a minor help, but nice. Overall, very average perks in my opinion, but not the worst either. He's a pretty middle-of-the-road adept, I think. Yui Kimura has some solid perks, but also some that can be detrimental too. Breakout will often get you into trouble with it encouraging altruism when someone is being carried. Any means and lucky break are both very solid perks though, although with limited potential, I think. Jeff Johansson has some pretty decent perks that make him quite average adept-wise. Distortion is great for hiding from killer aura perks. Aftercare is an amazing team locator and altruism perk. Finally, break down can be nice sometimes if there's a strong hook area. Quinton Smith encourages a rather passive playstyle. Pharmacy is the weirdest healing perk in the game, but does help a bit. Vigil is a nice perk to help with debuffs, and particularly if your teammates run some exhaustion perks. Wake up could also come in handy during the end game when getting to the exit. Still, all very weak perks and largely a hard adept. Jill Valentine gets some pretty solid perks, but after Blastmine's nerf and Counterforce being a very average perk, you're mainly relying on the slightly faster post-hook heal you get from Resurgence. It's an okay set of perks, none of them work against you or put you at risk at least. Zarina Kassir I am putting higher despite the strength of her perk off the record. Red Herring is genuinely useless and a time waste, and For the People encourages you to be actively dangerous with how you play. Because of those two more dangerous perks, Perks, she's higher up here for me. Renato Lyra has a range of very difficult to use perks, I think. Background player is one of the weaker exhaustion perks and isn't the best for survival. Blood Rush doesn't pair too well with it either and is kind of useless, I think, due to that. The teamwork perk, again, is just eh, it's awkward to use, I think. This adept is actually quite tricky. Jake Park, I'm going to classify as not too hard as I do think he gets some solid stealth elements with both Iron Will and Calm Spirit. Saboteur can be helpful, but it could also cause moments of danger. Overall though, stealth is pretty great I think, and Jake isn't too hard to do. Onto the quite challenging tier. Talita Lyra will start us off with some pretty decent perks that speed up gen speeds and give some stealth. The teamwork perk is honestly more of a detriment I think, but that's just me. For this you're mainly relying on the additional percentage of gen speeds you can provide with the friendly competition perk. Yoichi Asakawa is definitely on the harder end of things. Dark Theory is pretty useless as a boon, and his other two perks don't get activated much or really come into play. You can make these perks work, but they are definitely a lot more effort than for most. Yunjin Lee I am actually going to place quite highly too. This may be a bit of a curveball, but I think her perks do kind of encourage you to be pretty risky with play. Smash Hit often just gives the killer hits and can be hard to land a pallet stun. Fast Track is undoubtedly helpful, and Preservation undoubtedly useless but yeah, I do think she's a little harder due to the risk factor. Jane Romero is somewhat for the same reasons. Head-on will often put you in dangerous situations, particularly with it lacking
fucking quick and quiet. Solidarity and Poised are both perfectly average perks, but yeah, I think Risky Playstyle for Jane makes her adept a bit harder. Elodie Rokoto has a set of perks that have very rare activations. Appraisal, let's be real, is largely a time waste. Both Deception and Power Struggle will very rarely work, I think. She has cool perks, but they aren't powerful in my opinion. Adam Francis is on the harder end too, with his perk, Autodidact, that actively nerfs your healing to begin with. Pebble is Pebble. Deliverance is overrated in my opinion, but sure could come in handy. His main downside is autodidact and the luck required surrounding it. Vittorio Toscano has two very risky focus perks with potential energy and quick gambit. You're honestly just better off not using them I think, if you want the adept. Fogwise gives nice information, revealing the killer Zora with great skill check hits. He's kinda nerfed by those other two perks though. Lori has the perk Soul Survivor, Object of Obsession, and Decisive Strike. Lori is a character I'm placing here because, despite her strong perks, a lot of them are very hard to use. Object is the main thing making it difficult, with your location being revealed every 30 seconds to the killer. Sure, you have DS, but that perk is heavily nerfed nowadays, and Soul Survivor doesn't do much till the endgame. This is a pretty tough challenge, I think, primarily because of Object, though. Finally, we have the very challenging tier. Cheryl got rated fairly average in difficulty in the poll I did, but I honestly think she's one of the hardest characters. She has Soul Guard, Blood Pact, Repressed Alliance. Soul Guard barely ever gets a chance to activate nowadays, and Blood Pact and Repressed often actually put you in more danger by using them, I think. Ash Williams is definitely one of the harder characters to get the adept for. His perks are pretty dreadful, with Buckle Up and Flip Flop doing very little. Metal of Man often actively makes you play in a more dangerous way, just to get the perk to work. So if you really want the adept, you're playing with just the two weak perks, I would say. Ace Visconti is one of the hardest because you're basically playing with no perks. Open handed extends aura reading abilities by 8 meters, but you have no other aura perks, so it doesn't work for you. You can get value from teammates perks, but again that's kind of luck based. Up the Ante is one of the weakest perks in the game, altering your luck by a few percent. Ace in the hole gives you some add-ons with your chest pulls, which I guess could help. Really, this adept is probably the closest to playing perkless, which I think makes it one of the hardest. David King, I think, has to be classified as the hardest though, purely from No Mither a perk that forces you to be injured the whole game. I would have actually said that he wasn't the hardest prior to the dead hard change. Now with it only activating on second hook though, it's really not as strong or reliable as it used to be. His third perk can help for sure too. Really the toughest part is the constant injured state. Not everyone is confident running when injured, and so I think having this lost health state makes it the hardest survivor adept. I do hope you enjoyed, and let me know your own thoughts on the difficulty of these adepts too down below. Thanks, and goodbye.